Hello, and welcome to the Raw Fork Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Marina Buxov, and I'm a functional medicine pharmacist in New York, as well as an integrative health coach and clinical herbalist. I'm pleased to go into season three of this podcast and continue to bring on other holistic-minded pharmacists, as well as healthcare professionals to the show. I'm constantly inspired by my guests and their stories and love sharing their points of view with you all. Hi, uh, welcome to another episode of the Raw Fork Podcast. I am super excited today. I'm talking to a very versatile pharmacist who is down in Costa Rica right now. Um, She's a functional medicine pharmacist, a wellness community builder, and believer in natural molecules. So welcome to the show, Dr. Jenna Clack. Thank you so much for having me. I am extremely, extremely excited to be here. Yeah, um, we're so excited to hear about your journey and how you came to be such, you know, a wonderfully versatile pharmacist. Like I've spoken to you before and I've seen like all the things that you've done in your career. So I'm super excited to like dig deeper and see how it all began, you know, where you grew up and how you came to be a pharmacist in the first place. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I never would have thought that I'd be a pharmacist and I've heard that comment, like I'm an atypical pharmacist, which makes sense. I grew up in Kerrville, which is a retirement community in Texas, Hill Country, beautiful community, Um, lots of summer camps, country clubs, uh, a lot of, you know, anything that requires a beautiful environment. And my grandmother was uh, actually a hospice nurse. And I remember thinking like, it is so freaking stupid how our medical system runs because at the end of life, people would tell all the regrets and feel like I worked so hard and I had this little bit of an enjoyment. And I felt like it was really bizarre that like in sixth grade health class, I'm like, we can do all of these things to modify the way that we can live. And then at some point in our adulthood, it's like, and now it's time to sacrifice myself for 25 years and hope that I make it to enjoy. It was really bizarre to me. And I remember thinking, honestly, it was like a Saved by the Bell episode where they were like doing subliminal messaging. And I was like, huh there's like something going on that we should be doing. So I wanted to go into broadcast journalism and fashion design. Like that's what I wanted to do was to do the messaging that makes a difference without being in your face because most of the like direct communication is, and as we've studied, less and less important, right? So really what happened is I thought it was really bizarre, but I grew up in a really beautiful place. I um, I was a, I was an only child, so lots of reading and I wanted to save the world and my friends. So I thought it was like my mission to like study all I could and put together ideas to save the world. Right. Um, which is so bizarre when I was thinking about that, it's, it come, it all comes back around, but that's where I came from. My uncle was a pharmacist, but I never wanted anything to do with that. I couldn't understand it <laughs> at all. My dad would always tell me if I was sick, he was like, well, baby girl, you're as sick as you, as you want to be. Like you can let yourself be well. And that always seemed to be true. And I went through a lot of really big sicknesses as a child. I had mono for a really long time. Um, and Kali, that was horrible. And just learning the mental strength of, mm, of finding the space to heal yourself was something I knew. So I fell into pharmacy as a job um, while I was going to school. And I just... I started working at Hobby Lobby thinking I would love it. And then they put me in the fake flower department, which I hate fake flowers. I hate the sound of cardboard opening. So I was like, legitimately like everything I didn't like, which I've loved every job in my life. Like I've waited tables and bagged groceries and worked everything at this point, up to this point. And I hated it. So I talked to my mom and she was like, you just need to get a job in the medical field so you can do school better, right? So I started working in a pharmacy, which happened to do compounding behind a big glass window. Um, I was a clerk, so I was like ostomy bags and like selling lift chairs and fitting for job stockings and selling prescriptions and front end stuff. And I was super curious about compounding pharmacy. I saw them behind the window and really wanted to do it. So studied, became a technician. And so I never really counted pills at all. Someone got fired like the day I graduated my, and passed my test. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so what happened was when I started working in the lab just as a job, progesterone, bro. Progesterone is the coolest molecule ever. And I started wondering, and I've been taking birth control since I was 15. I was like, so these are, this molecule is not the same as this. So then I took Ochem and my whole freaking life changed. I was like, <laughs> lies, lies and falsehoods. And a lot, and all of a sudden broadcast journalism and fashion design were still cool and fun, but like, it didn't seem as important, right? Like, cause we were having people who never had babies before be able to have babies. And it's a natural molecule. And we were having people who were like about to be putting in insane asylums for having like mental dysfunction be fine in three months because they just had a severe hormonal imbalance that so then what do you do you know like so I changed my major and uh, at the time that was bizarre and then after I'd invested everything in this change found out that I was pregnant and did not mean to be well wow. <laughs> had to tell everyone because I worked in the lab. So I couldn't wait to tell anyone. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And I wasn't in a relationship that was at that point a place that we were um, supportive of each other. It was very toxic. It was a long, and, and it, was a, it was a lot, right? So that, that's a whole decision where it's like, okay, so now everything that I say I believe in, like, am I, Am I really there? Am I there? So I could feel a soul inside me. And like my responsibilities to show up for the world are so different than I, I knew it, but I didn't feel it. Right. Like you can know something all day. So whew, that was like a whole, that's a whole nother episode. So Absolutely, yeah, that's a whole not, And and the beauty of that is natural molecules make so much sense because there's so much feedback in the wholeness of something and in the concept of life being precious and not an inconvenience for natural cycles to be precious and not an inconvenience and instead to be held and to be um, regarded with some some respect right so um wow bomb then i went to community college at night and i'm a single mom going to my whole dream is to get into pharmacy school now because I'm going to be a compounding pharmacist and I'm going to do this thing and NCPA and PCCA and they're all my best friends and this is my life, you know, this is where my focus is. And so when I got the letter for pharmacy school, first of all, I think I cried 429 times and kept, I kept like back in the day when you had like a letter, right? So <laughs> opening the letter, looking at it, crying, putting it back in. <laughs> opening it, looking at it, crying it, putting it like over and over. And so uh, I went to pharmacy school and University of the Incarnate Word in San Antonio. Oh my gosh, the best school. I'm just going to, I'm just going to be real. I love my school. I love my school. I, my business card had like 13 titles on it. I was involved in everything. I was president of CPFI and NCPA and on the board for the education, <laughs> the curriculum uh, review and the Dean's Council. And it was just fun because I'm changing the world, right? Like I never saw it as anything different. And then rotations and seeing, you know, all of the different practices that are available. I ended up ma managing a hybrid store right out of, I've always had the best mentors, like just shout out to all my mentors. I just have found the best mentors. Um, and so I started managing a hybrid store with compounding and natural stuff with a genius uh, at Medical Center Pharmacy, Steve Rogers, and first at Oakdale Pharmacy and Jeff Carson and Matt Lester and all those guys, I should totally, I never name drop and I'm like, oh no, but like that they're such a piece of me. And I forget to say like, thank you so much for all of it, um, changed my life. And so I worked for him um, until he was going to retire. I was gonna buy a store, I got pregnant on purpose, but not at the right, you know, like not ever at a, I always say like, it's never at the time that you expect because we were thinking about buying the store and decided, no, I'm just going to manage for longer. Someone else bought the store. I managed for two more years and started my fellowship with A4M. And because in the background of all of this, the doctors are sending me labs and I'm writing recommendations for them because then we get the prescription. So that's a great little thing. And then pellets come to town and everyone's getting all of this crazy, uh, people who just started doing hormones on a weekend and causing all of these things, not realizing I mean, your hormones are your communication system for your entire body. 
Yeah. It matters. It matters if you move a little thing, right? So after doing a little bit of my fellowship, I realized I couldn't even be in the middle of some of these interactions to hand over some of these manufactured drugs um, at all. And, you know, because people trust me, me handing them that bottle meant something. And like, I got to a point, it was fentermine actually, that I tried to hand over a bottle and I was like, I couldn't hand it to her. And I said, like, you don't need this. And she said, I know. And started crying and I'm like, like we're, what am I doing every day? Like every time, and then I was like running through like every prescription, you know, like, and I would always say as much as I could. And I always would still give my counseling points to the annoyance of probably, you know, 80%. Um, and they just got to a point where I was in my fellowship and there was a lecture that said, and if you send them somewhere else, are they gonna have someone who cares about them more than you? I was like, shit. Nope. I love, I love, and I'm here and I'm paying attention and I understand. And I don't want you to just survive. Like that's not my bag. Like I want you to freaking live. Like I want that to be the, the, the thing. So I left the pharmacy and got a little office <laughs> beside of a friend's a doctor's office that I actually went there to bitch him about out about pellets. And I was like, so what are you doing? Like this book doesn't have any references or release rates. Like I understand, but if you don't know, then so he was like, well, I just don't know here, have an office and I make recommendations. So I started making recommendations and just while I was still doing my fellowship supplements, tea, it was an environment. <laughs> it's a whole thing, you know, formally. Um, and then waited for my store to be built. So built a compounding pharmacy, USP 800 with a spa front. And it seems like, I'm like, I've been in Costa Rica a year now, so I were thinking about new projects. So I was like, whoa, it sounds funny to like think about those times. Uh, I just remember, I mean, we helped so many people, started doing methylation, um, you know, really, really got into all of the a form stuff. And I'm a researcher, I, and, I am, and I'm an empathetic person, and we built these relationships based on relationships uh, that really grow health and build a wellness community. And I was, you know, moving upstream from these reactions, upstream from these reactions, because pharmacists are so good at that. And it's oxytocin. I was like, I just remember, it was almost like the progesterone thing back in the day. I remember it was oxytocin. I was like, okay, cool. So we know how to do all this. The next thing is to realize that it's all connection and you never need anything outside of yourself. <sighs> Shoot, what am I going to do next, you know? So I looked outside of myself for a minute and then realized that wasn't it. Um, and then kind of went back to all, of, all that I knew from patients. And I realized that every time they found what was going on, it was an inner space that they found. So studying how inter inner space is created. Um, I was thinking about, um, you know, the, the general principles of virtue, right? And so you think, Okay, so there's regulation and there's learning and there's selection. And so you create mental space, emotional space and spiritual space, and then you have healing. Then you, then that's, that's not something I can personally, you know, I can read these things and get you to a space that you can feel it because if you're completely out of whack with the way your brain's talking into your body, we have to start somewhere. I can do that. But now what, now you just pay me forever or don't like, that's not a thing. Like that's not, that doesn't feel good to me. Right. So creating that space became my kind of like thought process every day. Like every time I'm thinking about anything. And um, then we decided that we were going to start coming back and forth to Costa Rica to start um, building wellness communities. We were just going to come back and forth. That's what we we're going to do. That was the plan. Told my grandfather and he got really excited. My grandfather's an engineer. He's like line up math problems for me and be like, do it. Like he gave me so much empower. Like, here, glue these pipes. I ran electricity when I was like nine and 10 under the house. Like yeah. so, just such goodness, right? Like confidence, right? Like he'd stand next to you and you could do anything. And uh, I told him that he was so happy. And then he died. And um, so I met with a friend that I hadn't seen in forever. My husband and I went and met with our friend who also was like a really random connection is just you know, those people that you meet are like, just something is there, right? And that's that empathy that makes a difference. That is the connection that is everything, right? So we meet and we talk and I'm a big Game of Thrones fan and a girl has no name. 
So we're, it really, we're this is nothing, right? Like we're all the same spirit. We really are all one. And, and that is a big theme for me. And I was thinking about this space thing and my grandfather's gone and we're sitting, you know, it's so bizarre when you're like having wine and hanging out and just being, you know? And um, <laughs> there was a little bit of this bacon cheese appetizer sandwich, so good by the way, in this beautiful place in Kerrville. Shout out Kerrville downtown. Um, and <laughs> The guy comes by, our waiter comes by and says, hey, you know, like what name do I put on the leftovers? And I was about to say, and then my friend says, a girl has no name. And immediately I said, a space has no name. And it was like that moment, espacio sin nombre, so the space with no name. So that has been really building that connection of wellness community and intention. Um, and at this point, it's an empathetic nomadic wellness creation, which is so beautiful where we create space um, for empathetic wellness providers and for any prism, which we call someone who reflects the light. So the patients are now prisms, which is so, so nice to, to be truthful about that, right? So we did that. And then in the meantime, COVID. So <laughs> online education becomes a thing and it becomes so beautiful because the things that we believe in that are the background of being well through the neurohormonal system, which is 70% of it, right? So like all that we can pay attention to, that's so nice. And if our perception isn't allowed to shift, which is not your sole responsibility, it's your community's responsibility. So if that doesn't shift, we're really wasting a lot of our ability to, to make a change. So we do online education at clackthecode.com to help practitioners and patients wherever they are um, in this journey. And then we have Espacio Sin Nombre, which is just recently really popping off now that people are starting to move around again um, and be able to do that. Um, and I really am here to ap apply thoughtful application, like really, mm, not even that, no, no more empathetic, it's feeling. Feeling and putting things together in a way that is truthful. The truth in the way and the light is what got me into organic chemistry because I realized that you can discover what the molecule really is by its bonds. Like all of these things, I'm like, do y'all not get the analogy of life yet? Like, should we? I don't know. But so anyways, I, did I do a rundown? Did I hit the main points? How am I, Marina? I mean, I'm feeling empathetically that you you may have yes <laughs> that was like a life story and a career story and you know coming of age story and discovering the meaning of life story all in 20 minutes people that was like four in one well when I looked at the questions I was like huh I was like I want to write a book right now like I feel like I'm like side notes you know yeah, while I was listening to you, I was like, yeah, I mean, you can totally expand on each of those concepts. You know, I could see the chapters writing themselves practically. Well, what? Oh, yeah, I didn't even go into all of the other kids. And then I married my high school sweetheart. And he's the entire reason for the support system that we moved to Costa Rica. And people can't even believe how in love we are in Pura Vida. And like the whole, yeah, like. Oh, well, because when I think about the first story about children, I'm like, whoa, that opened my motherhood because I was not planning on being a mom. Like that was to me like, and that's something I think about all the time. Like, why did I not want to be a mom? Like, what did I see that's such a negative about it? And how do we decide those types of things, you know? And um, yeah, it's bizarre because now I'm a mom of three and like, Li living that life up here on the mountain with my kids and husband and like yeah going to the beach and the the ability to live a life that's actually healthy so that we realize that we can all do it like it's not so far-fetched it's not crazy it's way less crazy than the mad world cycle but man when I was pharmacy school. Like, I feel like those journeys are also intertwined for me. Like it wasn't this and then that, you know, I hear people be like, well, once I do this, then I'll do that. I'm like, I don't think that it's always been like 
like all stacked on each other, which has been interesting and fun and really, really abundant. And I'm really glad to be like in this space where I'm consulting patients and, and talking to amazing pharmacists. Like I didn't realize my whole day was mostly talking to other pharmacists that are doing other cool things where I, I'm not the only one grabbing the mic in infectious disease class and being like, I don't believe in this, you know, like what? <laughs> I, I really, there's everyone doing their own thing, which is the point. Like we, we all have such a beautiful place to be in the community to cultivate each of these little pieces. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe, yeah, I married my high school sweetheart, like in, yeah, later. <laughs> Shut up, don't be so cute. He's standing right there being real cute too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he can come on too. <laughs> he's got his coffee. Actually, do you have my coffee? Oh, yeah, I'm like mountain manned out right now. He's, he said he's mountain manned out right now. He <laughs> kind of is. He has, this is the longest his hair has ever been. Hey. Hello, hello. This is my COO. He's my vice president of one company and my COO of the other. So I'm president and CEO. It's true. Yeah, awesome. Great to meet you. It's good to meet you too. I'm going to go get some coffee real quick. <laughs> Keep yeah, up okay. with work, yeah. Well, um, yeah, sorry about the delay. Yeah, internet, we got really fortunate and got good internet a while back, but uh, for a while there, it was touch and go. So I heard you give your little disclaimer at first. I was like, no, you're good, seriously. If our internet's working, then everybody's <laughs> no, fine. We, it's so interesting because they had to install like a giant thing right here in front of our house. I'm like, I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I feel like I might have, which I don't, you know, love up on the mountain. And at the same time, it's been so nice. We were, well, people have been asking like how we've been affected by all of this. And I'm like, we kind of planned to just go with the flow and adapt and doesn't seem like a big deal anymore, you know, except for, you know, we had a retreat companies and, and not really retreats, but creating space for retreat companies. So that's been an interesting, an interesting thing, but all fun, all fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything that you're saying just like sparks more questions. Like, you know, the comment about 25 years that we're like, in this hustle and bustle, we're like the hamster in the hamster wheel that we're yeah. like sacrificing, you know, our health and wellness and like well being in order to like make the money so that we can be safe later on at retirement, right? But it is very different and unexpected in societies like ours to just go with the flow and like follow your passion. Um, you know, a small percentage of people do that, whereas the large percentage invest in like saving for a rainy day and um, kind of ruining and, um, you know, taking on some negativity now in order to prevent negativity later on. Like, that's the thinking. Like, let me, you know, get something bad going. <laughs> like, it's not well, big, but at least it's interesting, be because, like, it's interesting because that's like in the past. So like enlightenment actually talks about that we realize that suffering is not good for anyone at any point in time. It's not a beneficial thing, right? So to relieve suffering, you go with the flow, you go with the cycles, you don't try to create something where there's a right or a wrong, which gets into like the quantum physics of choosing what you think is right or wrong makes there be a right or wrong. Before that, everything is possible and everything is there. It's beautiful. It's, it's experienceable. But I think what happened to me is consulting for all of the time because I started where there was a wellness center. I've always been, I'm a, I'm a talkable person. We can be friends. You know what I mean? And I'll keep your secrets because I don't, each of my relationships is separate because I'm, I grew up an only child. Like I just, the hip is easy for me. Right. So I, and in the pharmacy growing up, talking to everybody about their problems where they are really in a vulnerable place. And I really am there, right? Like that's where it's empathetic. And then it got to a place where I don't think it's that, crazy that I didn't do the same things because I felt like a freak that I couldn't, that it was hurting my soul. And I thought I was the only one. And then I started consulting and I realized everyone, why? It was the same stuff as when I was a kid. I was like, but you know, I don't want you to sacrifice yourself for me. And you don't want me to, 
where does that switch? And then I started realizing that people who worked their whole lives and like gave away and did all of these things and like such good people like putting into so many beliefs of like being used by the system because when you see how it's calculated on the back end, it's frustrating. And then like, it's still not secure. It's a false security. And then even if you get it, you don't know how to enjoy it because you haven't. So there's like, it's not even like there's a close benefit. It's, it's like maybe 10% of the time it works out kind of like you think it might. Right. And after talking to people, so like, you know, eight to 16 appointments a day, 32 minutes to an hour, talking about hormones and perception, your brain to your body, what we're doing, lifestyle stuff. And I love you. I love you. And at some point, the perception in the community overrides the ability to do it on your, on your own. And you have such a want to do it on your own. Like that's such a programming. Like I want to figure it out and I want to do it on my own. Yeah, the ego. I love you. And when we don't, when we go to that space where we just can be, then these things that are killing us that we're trying to solve so desperately aren't there. Yeah. And I think that there came a point where you know, like, I have to be really clear about that. And I don't know how to be clear except to say, scientifically, this is true. <laughs> Here we go. And then I, I realized I couldn't die in my chair telling people how to live right with my arms crossed, taking on their trauma and do it. You know, there had to be a balance so that I could say, can we continue to be light workers in this sense? Is this sustainable? Because if it's not, then what's the point, right? Um, so it is, it's super sustainable, really fun. Um, <laughs> we, we can do this, we can do this if we support one another and, and let go. Um, but yeah, it's bizarre. I was listening to the song Mad World and yeah, it's tough. Like the world is heavy right now. I feel that for sure. Yeah. I mean, like you said, the artists were feeling it, you know, through all of time. They're great philosophers, artists, musicians, you know, we see it in movies played out, you know, directors. And we all like, when we dig deeper and deeper and deeper, no matter like what our industry is, but if we're interested in this um, study of self, you know, and of life, we eventually fall down this rabbit hole and we realize like a lot of the steps before that we took before could be kind of, didn't have to be taken, you know? Like we could cut out a lot of the legwork and just go there. Yeah, no, it's so funny. I don't know who I was talking to the other day. I was like, okay, so like, here's how it was, this is our like 20 year plan. So I was like, this is how, you know, time and then just collapse time and then like line it all out believe it, get to it, collapse time. Um, and it seems so woo-woo until you realize it's completely opposite. It's very, and it's so, who's who saying it? It's like, it's not easy, but it's simple. Like it's. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not easy to believe because it's so simple, right? right? It's like that book, A Wrinkle in Time, what you were just showing, you know? <laughs> because it's so simple you almost like don't believe that it's possible right because we're used to like everything being difficult and well and just like you said you were like and you're doing it and you're and i'm like yeah i feel like it's really easy to hang out at the beach and talk to my friends and philosophize and read all day and dance and like mm, hang out and like just make out with my boyfriend in public and you know like <laughs> I, I think I, I'm having a blast and I'm feel, and I know that that will have me live longer. I will be more vital. I'll be more beneficial to everyone around me. And we know that. And then we're like, oh, but not me. I'm not special enough. I need to buy something from someone because I've been conditioned and I don't realize it. So, you know, it's, it's learning that um, we're all worthy exactly where we are. We don't need anything else to heal, you know, and however that those steps are for you. And everyone's in a different vibration of where that's going to happen for them. But we feel like making it available to create the space to have the availability to communicate and get information out is 
oh, all you can do, then you feel like, oh, all right. Now I can like, honestly, dance, read, lay out in the sun, hang out with my friends. I'm co-writing a cookbook right now, which is gonna be amazing. We're planning a retreat, which is called Young and Wild and Free, and it's super fun to plan, oh my gosh. Like if you've ever wanted to, I mean like, yeah, yeah. And then I have a few um, clinical consultation patients, so I still get to do the relationship stuff on a deeper level, like it needs to be in, in my feeling to really get the most out of what's happening. Psh. I think that this has been the best just because you made me, I don't look at it. I don't sit down and look at it. If there's ever something that I could say I might get a little better at, it's this, then you've brought me to it. So like, first of all, thank you. Yeah, That's I'm glad to facilitate your space right, here, <laughs> right now. Um, and I think that's exactly what you were saying. Like we can't heal someone else, but we can facilitate the, their journey to heal themselves and like, show them how to do that but they have to go in there and do that yeah I would always say like I'm 10% you're 90 exactly I'm an important 10% like having an agent you got to get the right one but and it's you it's all you. yeah and that's really you know scary but also empowering to the patient ah. in of light, you know because it's all you know it's not something outside of them that they can go and get the best uh, this and that and best treatment the best doctor pay the most amount of money travel like the most the furthest distance to go there wait on the waiting list it's like it's accessible you know you're right there yeah no i think that that's what's really good is we hadn't planned to even huh. It's so nice. To, we hadn't planned to make it as accessible as it becomes. And that's what's great about being adaptable is that an adaptability is really how we evolve and how we are able to respond to life. And what I look at for in blood vessels too, because that's, you know, like it's the same stuff. It's being able to respond to whatever it is right now. And um, yeah, it's completely accessible to, to reach out and educate yourself on how you can change your brain. So like, the, the little uh, tagline for Clock the Code, which by the way, I love that. I love that name. It just came from a friend and what a great, what a great thing. So Clock the Code, unlock your mind to free your body it is, I mean, all of the messages that your body is receiving on how to behave epigenetically are coming from your thought processes and your feelings about those thought processes. And there can be disconnections based on a lot of things, which might mean you need to change things in your life. And to be able to have an outside view of how that's actually affecting your health and what you can do about it, that's not buy this and roll in that, do you know, like in these specific things. And instead of like find your space, allow for this space with the knowledge point so that you can learn with the regulation point so that we can develop those, those patterns with the selection point. So you can decide exactly what's best for you. I mean, of course that sounds great. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do that. And it's bizarre, bizarre and so beautiful that I'm sitting here and I feel like my six year old self being like, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we clacked it. <laughs> For sure. Clickety clack. Once you go clack, you'll never go back. <laughs> yeah, I totally that shirt. That's a good t-shirt, by the way. Yes. Speaking, speaking of, um, yeah, good merch for you. Right? I don't know, just like the, the idea of going down the rabbit hole just keeps coming up for me. And like, you're like Alice. You're like, you know, <laughs> here, drink this, take that, you know? But it's all like in your mind. You know, it is accessible without those exogenous things that we keep trying right. to like, put into it. Right. Well, and what's interesting is, I mean, even just down here in Costa Rica and experiencing plant medicine in a shamanic uh, ceremony and experiencing cacao, raw cacao, cacao ceremonies, um, all of the actually boiling our cat's claw and making tea and, you know, doing things that I'm like, you know, the whole self, it's so much more of a process, just like when we eat our food, there is a specific point that it is the best and that there is love put into the preparation and how much is behind that. And 
you know, all of these concepts that we all at our core believe in and try to ignore so that we can get through our day. I was talking to a really good practitioner friend of mine and she was like, but Jenna, how can I continue to, you know, live this life and tell people that the things that I believe in and I really believe in them and then I'm still in this life. And I was like, yep, I was there, <laughs> right? Like, because as close as you can get, it's an individual finding of that natural balance. And if there's anything that feels bad to you, then it's not in alignment and learning what that is, right? Like that's, I am a rabbit hole. Yeah. And feeling like what you were saying about you and your friend, and like, I feel it too, like that hypocrisy of like, you have to walk the talk, you know, you have to be the change. You can't just uh, say, okay, in theory, this and this and this, it will work. Because like you said, life just intertwines and like shows us its, its own like challenges and turns. And we have to roll with it. We have to evolve. We have to respond and adapt, right? We can't just oh no my whole plan like went out the window it's game over right Let me tell you how much i skipped over yeah you know what I mean? like because it doesn't matter i mean i think that's the thing is like and if we get too focused on something that's external that's the point right that's the distraction that's the loss of equanimity that's the loss of our peace and when you're saying that i was like oh so my dreads like i wanted dreads since the eighth grade and my mom let me braid my hair. What's up, mom? Thanks. With beads and everything. I loved it. But really, I really wanted their intentions. Each one, there's 40, and they're each an intention that I set as they're being pulled toward my wisdom center, right? So there's something behind it that I always knew I wanted to do. And I kept waiting until, 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 until. And then I'm like, you know, going to a Senate meeting. And they're like, yeah, maybe not dreads right now. You know, like, and so it's, it was this perception thing where finally it was like, what do I believe in, you know? And if I really believe in this, I'll do it. And that's how it came with oxytocin because I was like, do I really believe in connection enough to say like, that's what it is and really put myself, because if I believe that I can't be sacrificial for all of these years to be safe, that doesn't make sense. And to have no guarantees, like some of the times that we stepped out, we had no, I mean, I think one of the trips there was like forty dollars in the bank account, and it was like, okay, like we got an invitation to see this place to to do something. Let's see, you know, and come back, and pretty much everyone that I ran into was like, your energy is so great, and then everything starts happening for us and rolling in, and it seems to work that way. That when you believe, you believe, and it moves forward. It's walking on water, right? And we know we can walk on water, but it's like that hesitancy to step out onto the sea that keeps us in the boat, right? And then when you're walking on water, you have to keep believing the whole time. And sometimes you get a little wet, come back up, right? It's almost like falling asleep, right? We can wake up, and you don't, you're not mad you fell asleep, but like sometimes you're sleeping for such a long time, you're like, that was a really long nap, like. I've got to wake up and move forward. And I think there's a lot of us out there that are feeling that way. And um, it's time for us to do something, I think. Like, I feel like it is, not even I think, because I think too much, but I feel like, <laughs> I've been thinking about this stuff since, like I said, I was a kid. I remember saying like, oh, like, if you believe you're healed, you're healed. Like, and people say they believe that, but then we don't do it. And so, yeah, it might take some action on your part. You might need to, change some things around you and stick up for yourself and, you know, speak for yourself and uh, express yourself, which is so interesting. Cause I was like, what, it, why did I want to do broadcast journals and fashion design communication and expression? Yeah. Same, same thing. Yeah. I mean, like you were saying, you know, we get distracted by these worldly things and by um, getting some something outside of ourselves, like this gratification, like buy this, buy that, enroll in that course, get this degree, um, you know, do everything that society tells us is a picture of success. But once you get there, you don't always like feel like, okay, this is what I wanted all along. You know, you don't have that satisfaction. Then you just search for the next external thing, validation, right? But internally, all these symptoms are coming up. Our body's not feeling well. It's expressing. 
actually, you need to look in here. Look at, yeah, at, me. Look at me. You know, that's the body's way of well, getting our attention. So it's look interesting here. that you said that because when you're saying like, so it's like protocol, right? It's like, you look outside to feel, see what box you fit in. Like, am I a pharmacist? Am I a functional pharmacist? Do I like to dance. Where can I dance hip hop? Where can I stand by the beach? Where can I take pic? You know, like what are the, whatever you like to do, where, why am I in a box? And it's like compounding is like, you know what? Maybe you're not in a box. Maybe we can make the world fit you. And the world that you create to fit you will also fit a lot of other people that felt like they didn't fit. And now we all have places to be instead of competing for sh that doesn't even exist in these boxes. And that feels so much better. And it's the truth. And I, I know we're all feeling like, I know that we get that now, but it's like, okay, so how do I do it when this is all of the training? I realized my, all my learning was definitely coping mechanisms for sure. Like if I can be smart enough, I'm good, especially as a woman, like in this yeah. situation, like I remember listening to Tupac songs and being like, he told you how to do it. He told you how not to be a bit, you know, like I, I you, you, <laughs> The, the lyrical miracles that have fueled my life are, are endless. But I think that that's like, we choose our thing and then we don't want to admit that that was our thing yeah. to, to give us separation. And I realized that's why I created JW because I was in DC walking between museums and on these councils and doing all of these things. And I was like, I'm also just me. Like this is, I need, so I talked to my husband and I was like, <sighs> like my ego self. And he was like, your ego self is yourself. Like that's all part of it. And so I think the very first post I did, was like, um, once my ego self, now just myself, just merge it and just be right. Just stop. And so I posted on there, um, a Lupe Fiasco song, um, every day, like one line unpublished for a year. I don't know, a year or some months. I remember thinking like, I'll just do it every time I think about it unpublished. And when I'm done, then that's time to publish it. And then I published it and no one cares and it's little and that's awesome because then I just keep putting things and the people who resonate, right? So it's grown really naturally. And so now I have an affiliate program with Gemstone Yoni, which does so much for meditation and spiritual healing for females. Um, I talk a lot about hip hop stuff and the lyrical miracles behind happiness and health because hip is the knowledge, hop is the movement comes from hippies. So it's really a nice little linear um, play on what we do and scientific truths. And I'm like, shit, we can be a whole person, you know, and that's what everyone wants the reassurance that is available. And if we don't know how to do it, how do you teach someone, you know, like separating us into all those little boxes, like you're saying, like, you'll, ha you'll be happy. I remember being like, when will I be an adult? And I did it a little out of order. So I was like, okay, so when, when I get, when I have a baby, nope. When I have this like certi certificate, like a real job, nope. Pharmacy school, when I'm a doctor, nope. When I'm married, married, nope. When I have two babies, nope. Three babies, nope. Manager of a store, nope. Owner of a store, nope. Like, you know, I'm not an adult because I'm just a spirit in a body moving through, right? And so this lie of you'll have a happy birthday, like there's this specific point you're reaching to is something that if we can all just get comfortable with life and death cycles and how we can optimize our life and be really honest with it and stop lying that this capitalistic <sighs> is gonna do anything, right? Like it's a tool, it's a tool. That's it, that's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I totally can relate to like feeling fractured and not feeling like you're a whole being because you have to act certain ways where it's acceptable to act certain ways. You can't just integrate your whole self and just be your unapologetic, you know, whole self every single minute of the day. Like a lot of us feel that way. A lot of us feel like you have to fit in with these people like this, you know, and then you have to act like this with those people in that place or in that place, you know, this is appropriate. This is unacceptable. So, you know, but if you're integrating and living, you know, fully, and I think there's a lot of unlearning also to go through this process. Yeah, because we, we have to unlearn those habits or those belief systems that don't work for us. And like we realize, we have to realize they're not working for us. We have to unlearn them. Then we have to actually fall in and lean into like the pleasure principle. Like, like you were saying, 
you know, we're here, we try to avoid pain. We try to avoid suffering. That's like a natural reflex of animals. But then we don't actually pursue the pleasure. We're just like avoiding the pain, avoiding the pain, but we're not actually going out there and, and going for the pleasure. That. No, I like, that's, that's perfect. Well, and it's funny because we, we put so much ego self on the choices that we make outside of ourselves and the judgment that might be in an appropriate and acceptable and all that. And that kept me in situations that I definitely shouldn't have been in. And, you know, I was in a really, really tough relationship with my, um, my eldest son's father for, uh, you know, seven and a half years. And people would ask like, how could you do that? Like, what were you thinking? You know? And the truth is that the, the emotions and the feelings were all really indicative of the things that I was allowing myself to say to myself based on what the society felt like, what my community felt like. And I had people there that were for me. And that's eventually what, what saved us, my, myself and my son. And, um, and it's so interesting because when I started dating my now husband, which is my high school boyfriend and the cutest boy ever. Um, I started, you know, visiting him and going and hanging out. And I remember saying like, I'm really happy right now. And he said, well, you deserve to be. And I started crying for two hours because I think sometimes we really just can't believe. And it hurts so bad because we've told ourselves what we have to do and we've been doing it for so long. But if we stop, what does that mean? Yeah, who are we? Just for us, but for what we did for everyone else, you know? Yep. Yeah, our story. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I mean, what, our, what the society tells you, what your parents tell you, you know, what your school tells you, whoever you come in contact, who's like an authority figure is always telling you, but then when do you take the reins? Yeah, well, and you look at the, I always remember thinking like Siddhartha, right? So like he, they thought he was crazy because he had talked, was studying under the most enlightened man and he decided I'm going to go find another teacher. I'm like, well, why? It's like, well, because he's still not enlightened and I've been here for about seven years. And so I need a different perspective. It's not that somebody has it all. It's just your experiences that you align with best in that moment and you have to accept them. So accepting it, I mean, honestly, it's been my challenge and I would venture to say most of our challenges just to accept our worthiness and that we are able to have all of this. I talk about my life with my husband and my kids up here sometimes and we laugh because I'm like, whoa, this like sounds like Jenna land. And I remember friends telling me like, you can't live in Jenna land. I'm like, I'm here, <laughs> you know, like it, it, it exists. And I remember having such a hard time trusting and all of the times that I had a hard time trusting in the goodness and leaning into the feelings, it was because I had been so used to what makes sense or what what think what thinks right not what feels right and because you've got all these defense systems that are around thinking you have to stop and feel into it right and that's a practice like i've had some great great coaches and mentors along the way i mean recently gracia carlson life coach and then uh danielle paradine who's like a integrative style coach. I got up one day. I love fashion. I didn't know what to wear. I didn't know that she was going to walk me through shit where it was like talking about like, why did, why would you want to be acceptable? I'm like, Oh, because I was disowned from part of my family for watching this movie. And she's like, what the, that's crazy. Like, let's talk about that. You know, so there's things that are happening and I've had up here, like, beautiful energy treatments and, and all, but what, I did as I healed, I'm healing myself. I'm finding space for myself. And now I'm so much more beneficial to everyone around me. And I think we all know that. And then we just are like, but wait, I'm supposed to suffer first, right? Like I, <laughs> it, it gets caught. It's un, when you said unlearning, man, that's it too. Yeah. And just like the alchemist, right? You, it's kind of like Siddhartha because only when he did the whole journey and came back home, did he find the treasure that he was looking for all along because it's always inside you. Right. The cure is an illusion. The cure is an illusion. And I, I love that. I was reading a completely separate book, which I don't even have around me right now, that was talking about stories and storytelling and that 
you know, the, the journey is what the cure is. And we always would love to think that we don't need the journey to have the cure, but you don't, it's, it is what it, that's what it is. So the more accepting you are, are of your journey and the more aware you are, because sometimes you just aren't aware of the terrain. And if you would have been, you might've been able to go to a waterfall instead of climbing through the Arctic, you know? And so taking some time, like meditation is a thing, guys. Like I didn't know how I was doing it as a kid. I'm an only child and my mom let me stay up and I was by myself a lot. And she let me do, I mean, I read, listened to music, stretched and was quiet and talked to myself. And my mom talked really nice to me. Like I'm going to change the entire world and I'm the best thing that ever hit the planet. And, um, I think that's good. I think that's all we should all be doing. Right. And then, and then we go out and shine light and move forward and recharge and, and find out our special pieces. Cause it all looks so different. Like it does not, not everyone's going to look the same. Mm -hmm. I think I struggled a lot with that. Like, where am I going to fit? Like, Oh, nowhere. That's great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's exactly right. Like we all feel like there's this, well, or we've been taught, you know, mm -hmm. and learned that there is a perfect mold. And if we could only just fit into that mold, like then everything will be fine and well, and that's the right thing to do to strive to fit that mold. But not any of us are, you know, we're not encouraged enough to fit out of the mold and to like break free and, and to shine our lights. Like I love that you brought that concept back up because of that, you know, namaste concept. I honor the light which shines in you. Like my, my light honors your light. And because we are all the same and we are part of this greater whole. Isn't it cool when you get to reflect and you're like, oh, I see you. Um, but like, I, I didn't realize how much my mom was a rebel and continuing to instill that in me. And like, I did like beauty pageant stuff and like, I grew up in Texas. So, you know, like there's, I didn't realize for so long I was afraid to not be pretty. I was afraid to not be desirable. I was, and that's not something that's possible in nature. That's not something that exists. That concept is exterior to the truth, right? And learning to unlearn all of those things. And then to think back and be like, man, some people didn't have their mom at home being like, baby girl, the only thing about you that's valuable is what's unique. You want to be different. I'm behind you getting a little bit of trouble, do all the, the things that really benefit, you know, you can do whatever you want. And I still tried to fit the box because I thought it'd be better for her because I saw her still fitting her boxes. So I wanted to be like her. Right. So it's interesting how that works. Yeah, like the emulation. So like what we were saying about practitioners, we have to walk the talk. Same thing for parents. Like even if she was saying the right stuff, which is awesome. And so- Yeah, yeah I'm glad for that yeah. for sure. You know, it's <laughs> by no means everybody's experience. Like I wish that was everyone's experience. And then, but she didn't show you that. So like she, she said the right stuff, but she didn't show it. And like, you know, everybody picks up on that, but especially children, you know, because- like we we do what we see we don't do what we're told yeah most definitely well and I think it's oh that's so true my my daughter is such a reflection and they all are daughter especially because just every mannerism everything and I look at growing up and the things that we would get into like a tiff about and it's about what felt uncomfortable or not aligned to her or what felt uncomfortable or not aligned to me individually, not, not as an interaction between people. And realizing that between your children is like, oh snap, that's everyone, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like what, if I don't feel aligned and I continue to allow it, then that's on me. And it's not, it's not such an, I don't know. I don't feel like it's such a self-responsibility because when you start to reflect that out to the world, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what it looks like to anyone else. And your truth is your truth. So showing that with children is just, there's no denying what's happening, you know? So through all of the years, what's interesting is like the, this is, here's a point. The hardest time my mom and I ever had was when a, a, she had some health issues and went to the doctor and 
they told her she was kind of being a hypochondriac, which honestly, I think that she had hormonal stuff going on or she's, you know, sick from the environment that we were Mm -hmm. living in just, you know, community wide. There's, there's just stuff we pick up on and we don't have skills to drop it. And no one tells us like, Hey, you deserve to have, and she was the best at venting all these things. And I'm looking and she went to someone and they said, here, have a pill here, have another pill. So she ended up being on like all of these pills. And then my mom was gone and I was a teenager. So she was there. I'm an only child. She's my best friend, her, my dad, my best friend my entire life. And like, we're the, the crew, you know? And she's not like really there. And I, I don't understand what that is, right? Like you can't understand what that is. You can't understand that most people you talk to are having a hard time really being there in their mind because they are some modified molecule interfering with their feelings, right? Um, and then I got on birth control as soon as I'm 15 because I'm 15 and that's what we do, right? And I was depressed, bro. Like I went into tailspin. I behaved in ways I never would have behaved I tried to kill myself seriously. Um, and no one ever told me, hey, it might be this or it might be that. It was like, something's wrong with you. You need counseling. Mm -hmm. You need, you know, like, and my mom was the best about it. My dad too. I mean, really, like I think back, I'm like, if it weren't for my parents, I don't know what would have happened. Cause I, you know, I've seen all of the other stuff but she wasn't really, she was on all of this medicine. She was sleeping all of the time. She could barely swallow. Turns out she had three huge nodules growing in her neck. They found like 12 years later. She wow. knew, she felt them, right? And so people ask like, why do you listen to people so carefully? I'm like, man, <laughs> he, no one was doing anything out of the ordinary there. They were going through diagnoses and being like, man, this lady is complaining about this stuff. And like, this is the, the symptom list and let's put her here and let's do that. And, oh, you know, this girl, she's a teenager. So of course her life sucks. So we're just going to let it, you know, that's, yeah. it's just so crazy to me when it's like women are like, I have a problem. And they're like, well, you should, you know? Yeah. Or let's fix you with another pill. But meanwhile, it's like, what are you putting into your body that could be contributing to the problem? Oh my gosh. Let me wear some more makeup and go to some more football games, eat some more nachos and worry about how I look and get into some relationships that are dramatic and let's, you know, like maybe, maybe someone should be talking about that, shit, you know? So it's, I think it's just always been bizarre. And I got to a point where, and, and you know, when you grow up with it and you see it and you're like, I must be crazy because everyone's going along with it. And I think that I thought that all the way through my professional, like until very recently when I started resonating with some other professionals who were like, you're saying it. And I was like, you're thinking it, why aren't you saying it? Right? So, so basically like I modified molecules are not my jam. I think progestin is like, and like, I understand the reasons behind it, but the reason behind it were cultural and are monetary. I mean, they're monetary and cultural. So like, if we understand that, then you can decide. And at that point I'm fine. But I think we need to at least, um, Acknowledge, acknowledge the choice, like be aware of the choice. Yeah, I really respect that. And I think, you know, just like all of the people, like we, we sometimes get on the same wavelength at the same time, like, you know, people invent things in different parts of the globes at the same time or make some kind of scientific discovery. So the same thing with right now, like what you're saying and what other people are, are thinking about, like, it's going to have to come out one way or another. We're all these right. vessels one of us is going to start, you know, and um, the rest of us are, are already there. Well, it's funny, my husband, when he started, so my husband was a firefighter, a uh, paramedic, and on the biohazard team, and when Niosh came out, and we were building USP 800 lab, and then he's so smart and beautiful that he um, also became my pharmacy technician and quality assurance technician, then uh, was doing that full time. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy that that was, first of all, time you never know when you're going to need something that falls in so he he comes out of the lab one day across to my consulting office he's like do you know that you can cure hpv and i was like it's a virus day yeah like and he's like why aren't people they're vaccinating it's changing genetics like he's like and it's so easy to make it's just this i can make it i got everything right now like we i was like i know I'm also a pharmacy tech. oh he's also a pharmacy tech <laughs> what did i say 
said the fire. Oh, yeah, he became a pharmacy tech. He's like, I did. I, I'm qualified to do that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, he's done everything and continues to. It's awesome. Um, and so he, he was just shocked. And I was like, yeah. And it, I realized how jaded I was and how frustrated I had become. Yeah. And how I had thought, like, I've been talking about this all the time. And every time I do, it's kind of like, shut up, hippie. You know, like, stop talking about herbs that you can put in your vagina. Like, it's honestly, it's like, and you have all these other benefits that come from these beneficial treatments. And so our consulting got really good, really big because applying natural molecules in a holistic way with an empathetic interview and with a full history with all of the tests we have available like it's just so miraculous to me what we are able to do and that we don't and then that frustration of like am i insane like am i the because certainly i feel like the science proves that this would be the more beneficial way to regenerate because regenerative medicine all we're doing is more repair than damage and we know how to do that like so it makes me feel very like good yeah. good because it's been a long time it feels like it's been a long time yeah well i would love to talk to you for even a longer time but we're running out of time so um would you do a rapid fire round with me really quickly Ooh, yes this is a game i'm, a, I'm on it yeah. um okay <laughs> what's your number one advice to improve someone's quality of life right now Create space for yourself without judgment of creating that space for yourself. Practice forgiving yourself first. When you find that space, fill it with something that you love. Guard it. That's it. Yeah, that was lovely. Um, number two, what is your favorite hobby or pastime? Dancing to hip hop music stretching while talking nice things to myself and running at the waves and jumping into them ch challenging them it's beautiful like just running into it yeah and oh and making out with making out with my husband i really like to kiss my husband <laughs> wow all great um choices um number three what is your favorite beverage um probably coca-cola in a glass bottle um second fiji water i know i'm sorry it is what it is and um costa rican coffee and the reason i have to name all three is i usually have three beverages with me and some random assortment i don't know why it's it's a thing it's definitely a thing nice all right and finally how can our listeners get in touch with you learn more about your offerings and courses and connect what? Um, so JW is my persona page on Insta and Facebook, clackthecode.com. And we also have all the social media associated with Clack the Code and Espacio Sin Nombre, which is E-S-P-A-C-I-O-S-I-N-N-O-M-B-R-E.com, Espacio Sin Nombre.com as well. And yeah, any of those places are great. All of them are better. Awesome. Well, I'm sure you practiced that before. That was like perfect. I did it. I'm just like, I'm, I'm in love with it. I feel so comfortable in this conversation. You rock. <laughs> well, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Uh, I hope to keep in touch and connect with you soon. And um, I'll put all the things in the show notes. Ah, perfect. I've had so much fun. This is awesome. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Raw Fork Podcast, and I truly hope that you enjoyed it and learned something from it. If you did enjoy it, please don't hesitate to leave us a five-star reading and a short, sweet review so that other listeners can find us across podcast platforms. To get in touch with me, you can go to rawfork.com or email me directly at marina at rawfork.com. Thank you, and I hope to see you back here next week.